Vorpex is a program that injects into games that don't support virtual reality and it enhances them in different ways with mixed results. In this video I'm going to give an overview of what it does and how well it works on a few of the games that I have tried with this software. It's worth saying up front that it isn't free, it costs $40 through the Vorpex website which I will include a link in the description. There is no refund policy so purchase at your own risk. So let's start by explaining how it works. Vorpex is very easy to use. You start the program and then you launch the game. If you're using a SteamVR headset then SteamVR needs to be open. If you're using an Oculus headset then Oculus app needs to be open. If the game has an official profile it will then hook into the game. You can put on your headset and play the game in various different ways. A full list of the supported games is available on the website. If a game isn't supported you can try and see if someone has already made a profile for that game and then you can download it or you can make a profile based on an existing profile. So for example, if the game uses the Unreal Engine, you can copy a profile that is based on another game with the Unreal Engine and then you may be able to get it to work. Once Vorpex is hooked into the game, then depending on the profile and the game, you will have several different options which I'll go over now. First, you have three main options on how to play the game. Full VR, which is trying to emulate a native VR game without the motion controllers. So when you move your head around, you will actually look around in the game. You use either a mouse and keyboard or gamepad to play, although you can use your motion controllers as a gamepad as well. There is a function called Edge Peak, which lets you zoom out to a virtual screen floating in front of you at any point in the game. This is actually really handy for menus and cinematics. Immersive Screen Mode is a large floating screen in front of you that you can adjust so it's pretty much filling your entire field of view. Although if you move your head, you will see the edges of the screen. My personal favourite which is cinema mode, this sees you sat in a home cinema environment with ambient lighting. If I'm playing on a virtual screen, I don't feel like I'm in the game, so I find it actually more immersive as it makes me feel like I'm playing a game in a different environment than my own, if that makes any sense. You have lots of options to adjust the size of the screen, add curvature, make the room brighter or darker, and this is personally the way I play most games in Vorpex. You can also enable some head tracking in both immersive and the cinema screen modes, this will enable you to look around a little bit and is handy to help you aim especially when you're using a gamepad. Depending on the game will depend on which mode works best but will also depend on the different options you have for the 3D effect. You can play with no 3D but to be honest you would be better off using something like big screen or virtual desktop as that's obviously much cheaper than Vorpex. There is the Z buffer option. This is a kind of fake 3D. It adds some depth and the best way to describe it is like when you're at the 3D cinema with the glasses. It separates the in-game assets into different layers and it shouldn't be dismissed. It's a great way to play, especially third person and first person games. It has very little effect on performance and the only artifacts that you'll see are some slight halo effects around some of the character models. You can adjust the 3D effect and I personally like to crank it up when using Z buffer to make the 3D pop out of the screen as much as possible. The other 3D option is Geometry 3D. This is the holy grail and will give you proper 3D just like with a native VR game. It isn't supported for all games and it can be very taxing on your system so you'll likely have to turn some of the graphics settings down unless you have a very powerful PC. I'll also say at this point that I'm using a GTX 1080 and can play most games but I know someone who tried with a GTX 1070 and they actually struggled with performance with Geometry 3D supported games. There are usually some issues with the 3D some minor, like a little weirdness with reflections, and some major, like bright white silhouettes around weapons. More on this a little bit later on. Vorpex does have something called Direct VR on some games, which goes into the game and automatically adjusts settings like resolution and field of view to try and give you the best experience. I've had mixed results with this and some of the time I end up having to make tweaks just to get it right. It's not complicated. It's all about changing settings in the game or using the Vorpex menus which are available to you but it can take a little bit of time to get right. Some games also just work straight out of the box. So let's end by talking about some games that I've played with Vorpex and how well they worked. I'll start with side scrollers. These are my favourite games I've used with Vorpex. You've got games like Unravel 1 and 2. Both have near perfect geometry 3D. The games look stunning with almost photoreal graphics and are as close to being native VR as you can get. The only thing missing is that you can't actually lean in. Other side scrollers that I highly recommend include Inside, Little Nightmares, Trine 2, 
and Ori and the Blind Forest, which are all fantastic games and look stunning when played with Vorpex. Third person games that I've played include Shadow of the Tomb Raider and the recent Resident Evil 2 remake. Both have near perfect geometry 3D and using Vorpex really enhanced the games for me. I also recently played through Jedi Fallen Order which does support geometry 3D although there were some lighting glitches. I ended up playing through the entire game with Z buffer and the game looked and played great on high settings at 1440p resolution. I've had mixed results with first person games. I played through the single player portion of Battlefield 5 recently and the Direct VR tried to run it in full VR mode but I ended up using the cinema mode instead. It only supports Z buffer but again the game looked great and was a much better way to play than just playing on my TV. The only first person game that I've played so far which felt almost native VR was Resident Evil 7. I ran it on high settings at 4K resolution and the game looked stunning. It had near perfect 3D with really clear sharp visuals. The problem was that when you get a weapon there is a bright white silhouette surrounding the gun and that was actually a bit of a deal breaker for me. I know some people that have played many games with full VR mode but I've not personally been able to find a game that I've wanted to play all the way through that's worked well. And this is where the problem comes with Vorpex. It's very much a mileage may vary depending on how you want to play it and the games that you want to play. I personally highly recommend it if you're happy to play it in the cinema mode with 3D. I feel that like I've got more than my money's worth out of it, but if you're wanting to play games in full VR, then based on my experience you may end up disappointed. A couple of recommendations. If you're using the virtual screen, then I personally run at 1440p resolution, which gives a nice sharp image. I found that you really need to be running at 4K for full VR games, otherwise it looks like it's a bit low resolution. Turn off any motion smoothing or ASW. Turn off motion blur, film grain or any other fancy effects in the games menu. If you have any performance problems, I personally find that start turning down the shadows or any ambient inclusion which tends to eat up a lot of frames. I also want to say a big thank you to Ralph who has developed the program. He's stuck by it with constant updates, new profiles and it continues to improve over time. A lot of people who have bought the game in the early days tend to shit on the program but I encourage them if they update it, try again because it's had a lot of significant improvements. Ralph is currently working on a big update that will allow for the community to create custom shaders. This is actually quite a big deal because it will allow for fixes to the 3D just like we've seen with the 3D vision community. So problems like we've seen with the Resident Evil 7 and the silhouette and the guns, these could be fixable and we may actually finally be able to get to play Resident Evil 7 on PC with near perfect VR support. If you've had any personal experience of Opex, good or bad, make sure to leave a comment, maybe recommend games that work well or games that you've tried that don't work so well, and this will all help obviously some people decide whether the program is right for them.